big things happening here at Piney Grove today. The very first wall of our house just went up. That's the west wall. So there's a bedroom, a bathroom, and the master bedroom down there on the end. Walls going up, going over top of the J bolts. Just can't even believe it. Seven years, seven years it took to get to this point. They say you never forget your first wall. Ain't she a beaut, Clark? And the funny part of that is I almost missed it. I was switching cameras and uh, doing something else on the other side of the foundation when I saw a bunch of guys gathering and about to lift up that wall. Glad I got it on camera though. So exciting. So they're framing the entrance to the house there. That's the front door header. That's the window header for the den. And this is the window area for one of the front bedrooms. Every time I turn around, something else new is happening. That is the wall of the master bedroom that goes to the outside porch there. And that's actually the wall that will have Deb's um, double slipper uh, soaking tub. So right now we've defined the space of the master bedroom and master bath. Master bedroom there, master bath there. So this window right here won't go all the way down to the, the ground. I just be up high so you can't see into the bedroom, but let light into the bedroom. And the whole house is gonna have nine foot walls or I guess uh, nine foot basic ceilings. And there's gonna be a couple of trays in here. So we'll actually go up to 12 foot in the living room but you may have noticed that these studs look a little longer than eight foot and that's to make a nine foot wall. And the main reason for a nine foot wall is because we're gonna have a porch. And if you start with an eight foot, by the time you slope down to the porch, it just wouldn't look right. Like the porch roof would be maybe seven foot. This is the two car garage. So they're framing that up now. You see that's on a, it's not really a stem wall, but they've got it, the concrete built up there so that this will actually sit up a little higher. You can see it real good there, how that concrete's formed up a little bit higher. Doing layout now for the bolts. So all those things mean something. X probably means don't put something there, or maybe jack stud or king stud or something like that. My dad was actually a master carpenter up in New York where I was born. And uh, I've done a little bit of building. So I've done, I worked one year for a contractor in Virginia in high school. So I've actually laid out a house before. I don't remember a lot of it. That was quite a few years ago. That is the breakfast nook wall going up. So that's actually gonna be one of the windows looking out, you know, giving us the view across Piney Grove. That's a foam barrier that goes between the concrete and the sill plate. So you have a treated board on the sill plate and then you have the foam that goes there. And I guess it's sticky because he, uh, he just hit it with a hammer to try to get it to stay there. No, it's not sticky. I don't know, some kind of trick of the trade, I guess. We'll see later, but what I think this is, is that's framed in that manner so that it'll go over top of this J-bolt and then I think we're putting threaded rod because we're in a hurricane high wind area and the threaded rod will go in that little cage they created. You can see it again here. You can see it on that wall too where they've got that blocking and then they left the, the top cap there. They left the opening. And I think that so we can put threaded rod from the top to the bottom and that allows you to get to the nut. We'll see. But I think that's the way it's built. Here in Florida, we have a lot of high winds. And the big thing here in Florida is keeping your roof from lifting. In a lot of other areas of the country, you're worried about snow loading and how much weight can your roof hold up. Here, you want to keep the air, let's say your window blows out. You don't want air to come into your house from a, a branch going through your window. And then changing the pressure and lifting your roof up. You keep your roof on top of your top of your house in a hurricane your house is going to survive you may have to reshingle it or something but your house itself will survive and it most likely will prevent water intrusion 
and most things that you'll have to do are cosmetic type of things to fix. The wall for the breakfast nook. And those J bolts are not straight up and down. I mean, they put them in the concrete and they don't use a square or anything because the concrete is still wet. So one bolt may be going that way, one bolt may be going that way. So they do the best they can to center them. And that's another thing, the bolts are not necessarily centered. If you look down there, you see the, the chalk line and you see this bolt kind of in the center. And that bolt's not. And that bolt's actually at the edge of the two by four. And so is that one. I mean, it's still gonna be a well-made house. It's still gonna be sturdy. It's just not gonna be absolutely perfect. When you're out here working in this environment, you're just not gonna be able to get it perfect. And another big thing is timing. We don't really have any rain between now and the trusses. So it'll be good that these walls won't actually get rained on before the trusses go on top. That way everything will stay more square. There's the garage wall. And that's kind of the southwest side of the house or the property. It's like the mud room wall right there and the other side of the garage and the entrance to the kitchen. Looks like that's getting closer. I'm gonna give credit to this crew. We got one foreman running around there. He's got the black hoodie on and the rest of them are just going at it, but they're doing a good job. I'm kind of looking at the way they're lining things up. They were out here last night pre-cutting the headers and uh, crowning all the boards to make sure that uh, our walls are as straight as they can be with lumber, because lumber's not perfect. But he's just walking around, making sure that things are going according to the plan. And by the plan, I mean the uh, architectural drawing. And these guys are just, just going to town and doing it correctly. It's just, it's a well-oiled machine and it's unbelievable how quick this house is going up and that this uh the, the exterior walls are going to get framed they got here at about 6 6 50 6 45 start work at 7 and uh, i think by noon we're going to have most of the walls up that ain't going anywhere because the J-bolts aren't measured, sometimes you can't get the stud where you want to get it. So you just have to be creative. Sometimes you'll cut out a little bit of the bottom of the stud, or maybe the stud won't be on a 16-inch center, and you'll have to put another stud next to it to hang the drywall. Just part of framing. I'm going to walk across the pasture a little bit here so we can kind of watch this house uh kind of rise from the little uh knoll or the little hill that it's on so that's what it's going to look like up there on the hill now we created that four foot hill might even be five foot tall we created that by taking dirt from our pond over there and they trucked it over here and they used the bulldozer to spread it out and pack it real good and when the builder checked it out when he came here to do a survey before they started uh, laying the, the boards and everything to line out the foundation. He said it was one of the most prepared building sites that he's had. He said normally they just show up and there's a field there with a bunch of uneven ground. That's a big wall right there. I think they're gonna put it all up in one piece. And they actually cut out the threshold to the door and a lot of framers don't. They stand the wall up with that all the way together and then cut it out later with a sawzall. You can see how much bow is in the top of that wall right there. That'll all get straightened and squared up when it goes up. It's funny how flexible a wall can be and you think about, you know, that's supporting your house, that's supporting your roof, your trusses, but it all comes together once it's all, all the corners and all the walls are tied in and there's a top plate and all the hurricane strapping and all the other things, it just becomes this one big monolithic square structure that uh, isn't going to move. I don't want to miss this one. Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. There it goes. There it goes. The front wall of Piney Grove's house. Now they got to lift it and put it on top of those J-bolts. Oh yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. We probably found this property right around this time seven years ago or, or maybe a month or two later and then closed on it like two months later. 
and we've just been working. We've been working every weekend. We haven't taken a single vacation. We haven't taken any time off. We work Monday through Friday at our full-time jobs and then come out here Saturday and Sunday and just work on the land to prepare for that. To prepare for that house getting built and that front wall going up and that just, it not only shapes the space and shapes the slab, but it shapes our future. And it's, I don't know, I got all these mixed emotions going through and uh, I just I just wish Deb, she can see me from the house over there. I just wish she was here. Let me go get her. So Hurricane Helena and Hurricane Milton just went through Florida and North Carolina and everyone knows about the devastation that they caused. And Deb actually works with an Air Force agency or headquarters that uh, brings aid to those areas so she's pretty busy this morning but let's see if we can uh, get her out here so she can watch a little bit of her dream house framing all right guys i got her she was busy and uh she's been actually watching from afar as she's been on her computer doing work but this is her first up you know up close look at her new house all Hello, right walls. deb that is the front wall of your new house what do you think I cannot believe how fast, good job, how fast it is. I can't believe, because like Brad said, I've been watching from afar, and I looked and there was one wall, and then I looked and there was two walls, and now I come out here now, I can't believe that they've got this much done. Why don't you take a uh, walk up to your bedroom there? I think it'll, it'll feel bigger to you when you walk up there. She's worried about being around the workers and getting in their way. Yeah, but... I, I, don't like, I don't like being in the way. They're used to it. I've been in the way all morning. And while we were talking, another wall went up. That wall just went up, your mudroom wall. That's crazy. They're so fast. All right, they there's your so bedroom. Fast. There's your uh, transom window above the bed. Oh, that's what, yep. And uh, they're framing right now wow. where your, your tub and shower is going to be. When I say her tub, that's her special tub right that's there. Special tub. So Deb just said exactly what I said earlier in the video that they are a well-oiled machine. And she's just shocked, because uh, what time is it right now? It is 8.24. It's 8.24, so an hour and 24 minutes ago, the guys started nailing the first boards, and uh, the, the space is really starting to, to take form. What do you think? I, I, think, it's, I think it's awesome. I, I, can't, I can't believe how fast it's going. I know that it takes days to do it, but I don't know how it takes days at the speed they're going. She, uh, when I went in to get her, she said, I said, man, you got to get out here. Things are going quick. And she's like, I thought there was three days of framing. I said, well, at least four of your walls are up already. I was watching from the house. I would come out and take pictures, but this is, this is insane how fast. I'm getting out of their way. Just wow. It's 2,100 square feet. And you were concerned about the porch being too small. But do you feel that way now as no. things are starting to get framed? Like, no. this is our porch. We have a good view of our pasture and there'll be a couple chairs out here. And what do you think? I thought it looked small when it was framed with the footers. Mm -hmm. But when, as soon as they poured the concrete, I thought it looked bigger. I think this is actually a perfect size. I'm just still flabbergasted that I can see a bedroom, a bedroom, the door, my den and breakfast nook. It's a daunting task to, to plan something like this that's gonna be your forever home because once you know you get to the stage of concrete, there's no going back. This is going fast. I gotta go back to work and I'm excited to come out here in another hour and see the progress. You might be ready to move in in another hour. Morgan Wallen has a song out and one of the verses or one of the lines is, we want a house on the hill, not in them. And that's what Piney Grove is all about. This is what we want to do. This is how we want to spend the rest of our life is out here on our 20 acres and just enjoying the peacefulness and the, all the things that come with country living. And country living is not easy. For those of you that, that do it, you know, right? Those of you that know, know. But a lot of people think that it's just this, you know, easy laid back life, but we're always very busy. Uh, once this house is done, that's not the end of the Piney Grove story. Then we'll be living here full time. Been working a lot on the barn. We uh, 
We'll be building that out, and in a in a few months, let's say six, let's say eight months or so, you should be hearing the sounds of Deb's animals as she's going out and feeding them, and uh, just continuing that that Piney Grove story of starting from nothing, building a homestead, and then enjoying, or should I say, working on that homestead. Bedroom wall is going up. Lifting it up to go over top of the J-bolt. Now the wall's suspended, and now they gotta find the holes for the J-bolts. All right, it just fell down. The, the wall's in place. The back garage wall is starting to shape up, get ready to go up as well. So this is two hours after they arrived. I'm gonna just spin around. A little wall to do right there that connects that. Same wall to do there that connects that. East wall is not up yet. Mudroom wall is up. Still got two porch walls and one garage wall. But that's just incredible progress in two hours. Only like four or five walls are not up on our house yet. Now that doesn't include the interior walls, but all the exterior walls I just showed you and uh, only four or five are not up yet. So they're working on an interior wall there. We still have the exterior wall here, and that's kind of what I want to capture. But back there, they're starting the interior wall. One thing that they did last night was um, they crowned a lot of the boards, and crowning is looking down the board to make sure that, uh, you know, if it's got a bow to it, that the bow is all on the same side, and uh, that gives you straighter walls. But they didn't just do it last night for these perimeter walls. They're doing it pretty much every time they pick up a board, they check it for crown. I just watched them and uh, they picked up a board to do something with and before he used it, he checked the crown on it to make sure the crown's facing the right way. These guys know what they're doing because not everybody crowns and when you don't crown, you'll have one board that's bowed in, one board that's bowed out and your, your drywall will just be all wonky. Trying to keep that foam in place, that barrier in place with the wind and tap it with the hammer kind of flattens it out makes it stay there we built a lot and uh there's not a lot left to build except for fencing we might do like a little gazebo or some sort of um solar thing out there that runs a fountain for the pond and we have to put um, a little house over the, the well back there so it doesn't freeze. Not that that's a big deal in Florida, but like once a year, we get down around 20. And uh, that one time a year, you gotta make sure that you protect your pipes. Like we're staging to lift up the back wall of the garage. I think they almost lifted that wall without putting the, the barrier on the bottom. Luckily, we've got great weather. So now have to worry about shorting out the breaker there where they're uh, recharging all the batteries to their cordless tools. Back wall of the garage. We are literally defining the space minute by minute. You see the doorway there on that back garage wall, that'll go out to the patio. And then this doorway here goes into the kitchen. Here goes the last major wall of our house, right here. Exterior wall. That's a big wall right there. I hope they've had all the children they want to have because that was a heavy wall. Now they got to lift it. All fun and games till you have to lift the wall. I have no idea how much that weighs. Here they go trying to get it over top of the J-bolts. They got it. Okay, the first day of framing got away from us. We captured a lot of footage. The guys were on scene 12 hours. They left and uh, got a lot more done than the last segment. So we're gonna sh walk you through that and show you all that in the next video. So be sure to stay tuned for that. 
Any final words, Deb? These folks are hardworking. All you people in construction, God bless you because that's that's no joke. Deb's exactly right. Hardworking crew was here over 12 hours yesterday. Started at 7. By 7.26, the first wall was up. And by lunchtime, they pretty much had the whole exterior framed. You see a lot more going, going on in the background, and that's because it's the next day. Mm -hmm. And they got here on the weekend at 7 o'clock to start sheathing the outside. But like I said earlier, that's in a separate video. We appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate your support. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see the rest of this house build. Till the next video, we'll see you guys in a few days. Take care. Take care.